crafty friends it's caroline and i am back today using all of this ephemera from last week for sandy's 13 frights before halloween 22. week 10 can you believe it oh my goodness this has just been flying by for today's project i'm actually going to combine it with a project that i have promised y'all for a very long time uh, no, not the B album. <laughs> that one will be coming. There was this video here where we cut enough album bases for four different mini albums out of two sheets, two 12 by 12 sheets of medium weight chipboard. And I started with the first tutorial was the six and a half by six and a half tutorial. That's this beach tutorial here, the beach album here. And then I was going to move over, move on to the five and a half by seven and a half album. That didn't happen. <laughs> I'm not sure what happened with that. It will come back around though, I do promise. But instead, this, I'm gonna kind of hop over that one and we're gonna do the four and a half by four and a half mini, mini album today. And we're gonna do it with a Halloween theme because this is, again, Sandy's 13 Frights Before Halloween 2022. We are going to make this as a Halloween album, but it's gonna be the full tutorial for that album that I promised y'all months ago. Sorry, I'm, yeah, it's life. I don't know what else to say. Anyway, uh, we are getting to it today, yay! <laughs> so to begin, you are going to use the chipboard that we cut from those two sheets of chipboard and it is two pieces that measure four and a half by four and a half squared and one piece that measures one inch by four and a half for our spine. And I'm gonna go running through all of the things that we're gonna use for this to build this. So some of the supplies I'm gonna be using for today are a variety of some specialty pearl and mirrored card stocks. In fact, we're actually gonna wrap our album today using the shimmer card stock from uh, Recollections. Let's see if we can reduce some glare there. It is a Michaels brand, and we're going to be using the darker color, the purple one of the Shimmer cardstock there to wrap our album. And I'm also going to be using some of this. It is a adhesive backed velvet sheets. And I found that it goes through the die cutting machine really well. And I thought it would add a really nice effect to our album. Um, so if for some of the decorations, so I am going to be using this as well. As you can tell, it collects a lot of lint. And all I do is take a piece of this like mint tape and you can just kind of clean it up. There's no reason to clean it up before we've got it all run through die cutting machines and stuff though, because it's just gonna continue to pick up stuff, but it does clean up really nice and it gives a really great little effect there. The paper collection that we're going to be using is this year's or one of this year's new DCWV collections called Mysterial. And I have the six by six and the 12 by 12. I wanted to point out to y'all, these are really, I. Okay, so let me back up. I only saw these online and the pictures weren't great and I wasn't feeling like they were going to be as fabulous as some of the DCWV Halloween collections of the past. I'm pretty impressed by them. And one of the things that I really like about them is that the 6x6 pad has different papers than the 12 by 12. So there is like kind of a differentiation between them. And I'm gonna show you like on this page in particular. When so, you open it up to the 12 by 12, we also have the tarot cards, but on this one, it's got the foiling around at the smaller scale. These are larger. I just think that that adds a lot of interest. In addition, there's a bats pattern on the six by six that has a completely different color background without the foiling as the same pattern that's on the 12 by 12, different color background with the foiling. I think this is brilliant. I love that they did this. It gives a lot of variety and I'm really happy that I bought both collections for that. I anticipate probably using mostly out of the six by six simply because of the scale and because we're doing kind of a mini mini, you know, it's four and a half by four and a half. But um, I wanted to have both of those out there. And so anyway, those are the papers I'm using. Sorry for the tangent. I'm a big fan of DCWV papers, especially their Halloween papers. So I kind of geeked out when I saw those when they arrived. And I wish I had ordered them sooner. I think, I think they're pretty cool. And then there's a couple other things I'm going to add in here that I don't usually do in my album construction. For the matting, when I use the velvet, or if I end up using the velvet for the matting, I anticipate that I will, I'm going to use dies to cut those pieces. Usually you guys see me use my paper trimmer. I tend to lean towards old school on tools, right? <laughs> but um, on this instance, I'm going to use dies only to cut this. It is adhesive backed and it's just, it's, 
because it's velvet, because of the plush nature of it, because of the um, the nap of it, it's they're going to cut better in the die cutting machine. And they do come out lovely in there. So I wanted to have that. I grabbed a couple other dies that I may or may not use with the velvet or with other papers. I'm not sure, but I was thinking these were scaled to the right size for the the size you know square that we're looking for for the album. I have an assortment of some ephemeras that I made. And I've got a little collection of some scraps that I pulled out of my scrap bin. I've got some um, glitter paper that I think I can use, some black artisan cardstock that I may be able to use, as well as a few punches that I want to try to use here. So as you know, I love my Martha Stewart punches. <laughs> I'm not sure which collection I'm going to use. I have got the spider ones that you guys have seen previously. And then I also have a collection of the spider web one. There is the, the border punch, the corner punch of the border, right? There's a, a, a corner punch for borders here. But there's also a photo corner punch. And I think if I use these, that's probably the one that I'm going to use. But I've got them all out here just at the ready if I decide to. And so I'm trying to be a little bit more organized. I am in the process of doing a massive cleanup of my craft space. I mean to tell you guys, it's everywhere. Um, and so I'm trying out a couple different methods currently to see which one I like best and, and kind of how I can you know, maybe streamline some of my projects so that I'm not doing these projects, you know, months after the intended time. And hopefully I'm able to uh, keep on a schedule. I don't know. <laughs> None of this may happen. I have to be honest with you when I've, you know, I'm a single mom, I'm working a lot of hours. I've got little side things that I do as well. And so I have been just burning the, the candle at both ends. And, you know, kids are back at school and there's a lot going on. And then, oh, yeah, I have this compulsion to craft. So <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Anyway, um, I had written some instructions for the four and a half, four and a half mini album way back months ago when I had first planned on doing that. So I am going to go off of these and I'm going to take this as an opportunity to edit them. I have recently found and I want to apologize to y'all. Well, I've got two things. I want to apologize to you because I recently found errors in some of my cutting guides and also ask you that if you notice errors in the cutting guides, please don't hesitate to let me know. <laughs> I think what has been happening is I, I make them and I'm thinking the right numbers. And when I think I'm going back over and testing them, I'm not really even reading if they're the right numbers or not, because in my head, I already kind of know what they are. Seeing it is more of a prompt to make what I've already had fresh in my mind. So I haven't been the best editor of my instructions. So I'm hoping that I will do a better job of editing these and making sure just, you know, confirming that they're correct when I'm, um, you know, making them for this, this second time around, so to speak. But um, I, you know, these are the ones I wrote when I made this version of it, right? Which was, again, I think it was way back in June sometime. I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, um, so I'm going to be following that and we're going to cut from those pages. All right, this has been way too long of an introduction. Let's okay, go so ahead. Okay, so I've and gone through started. and I've cut all of my cardstock pieces. I like to stack them up, you know, kind of in as I'm cutting them, I cut from the first page or the first things that I want to use to the last things I want to use. And then when I finish them, um, cutting them, I stack them upside down so that when I pull the stack up, everything is now in order of, you know, the order that I want to, you know, pull from. So those are all cut and taken care of. Like I said, we've got our chipboard taken care of. I did use seven sheets of eight and a half by 11 cardstock. And these are the scraps minus the little tiny shavings that I've already tossed in the trash that I have left. And I am probably going to toss these in the trash. I, um, I don't know, might keep these larger ones, but I'm not going to keep these little tiny things, but I did want to show you that that's what I have left over. Now let's go ahead and wrap our front and back cover and spine and attach them to build our album base. Now I am going to use the lay flat method of album construction that was designed by Tamara Merrill of Country Craft Creations. And I'm going to have her video linked in the description notes below, as well as the video that I made that shows how I use her method in building my albums. So I'm going to run through this fairly quickly, but both of those videos will be linked in the description notes below if you have 
questions or want a more uh, maybe in-depth tutorial on how this is done. So to begin, we have one piece that measures four inches by six and a half inches, that's to wrap our spine. And we have two pieces that are six and a half by six and a half squared. I'm gonna begin with my spine. And I also use spacers that are available to purchase at countrycraftcreations.com or now in her new brick and mortar store. Um, big shout out and congratulations to Tamara Merrill and all of her amazing team and family there in Utah. She created her own brick and mortar store and that's really exciting. So I'm assuming you can go in and buy these too. It is absolutely the most darling store you've ever seen. I've seen photos and videos online on Facebook and on YouTube. And I can't wait to go in there and shop. It just looks like a lot of fun. So um, please check that out. If you're ever in the area, go by and see her and tell her I said hi. So we are gonna begin with our, um, our spine wrapping. And in Tamara's method, you leave a one and a half inch space on either side of your spine and one inch is on the top and bottom. So I'm using the corresponding spacers here. I've got my one inch spacer at the top, my one and a half inch spacer at the side. And as you can see, our spine piece is just perfectly centered then into this piece of cardstock when we do it that way. I use liquid glue in my album constructions and I'm just gonna apply some glue to my chipboard press it down, I'm pushing it into that corner there of those two spacers so that it's really positioned right where I want it to be. I'm gonna remove my spacers, kind of lift up any glue that may have seeped out here. There is some. And then I'm gonna run my bone folder along the edges of that chipboard to sort of help it begin to wrap around, just like so. And then it's just a matter of folding it over on itself and really creasing that paper down so that we've got a nice tight wrapping around the chipboard of our spine. Just continue doing this all the way around all four sides. There are these four rectangles that are created in each corner after having folded our paper around our chipboard. And we're simply gonna remove those by cutting them out right on the fold lines. And then I'm coming around and I'm going to um, fold back each of these pieces and just give a slight angle from the corners here that I just cut out just to very, very slightly miter them. I'm just, I'm giving a very slight angle there. And like I said, I go into more in depth on what this process is in my video. I know Tamara goes into in depth on her video and you can look at those and, you know, come up with what works for you on the best way to get it there. There's several ways to do it, but that's basically what we're doing. And then we're going to apply some glue on this tab, as well as right along that edge there where the paper meets the chipboard. Stand it up, give it a slight wiggle, bend it over, kind of smooth it out, clean up any glue that may have seeped out of here. And I'm making sure that I've really got this stuck down and kind of formed to the shape of the chipboard. I'm really trying to wrap this around that chipboard so that I have nice squared angles. And do the same thing on the other one. Smooth it out, cleaning up any glue as I go if any happens to seep out. And then once that's done, we're going to place it so the right side is up, so our pretty, you know, our, our, our paper, our cardstock is facing up, and our chipboard's on the bottom, and we're gonna it continue to kind of burnish or run our bone folder along the edge of that chipboard in the same way we did before we started folding it around. And I'm really kind of sculpting the paper to fit around the chipboard in such a way that it makes it so the paper is now flush with the bottom side. If you can see that, the paper is now flush with the bottom side of the chipboard on either of the wings. And that's just what we're looking for. So I'm going to, um, because it's liquid adhesive and because sometimes there's some warping, I just like to do this one first because then I take it and I slip it up under my mat 
and I just let it sit there and that just makes sure it's going to stay straight and flat and I'm going to move on to wrapping my front and back covers. Now for the front and back cover we have our piece that measures two inches larger length and width than our front and back cover that we've cut from our chipboard. We're only going to use the one inch spacers around there. Again it's cut two inches larger so we're going to use a one inch spacer on the top and the side and when we place it in there it is then perfectly centered on that piece of cardstock that we're going to use to wrap around it. And so I'm going to place some glue on my chipboard and stick it down pressing it into those spacers so that I've maintained my perfectly centered position. I'm going to remove the spacers, give it a nice firm burnishing from the right side and this is in an effort to really kind of squeeze any glue out to the sides but also really just to spread the glue out between the paper and the chipboard that's really what we're trying to do is just really spread that out so we've got a nice even layer and then once that is done we're going to come around again with our bone folder rubbing it along the side of the chipboard to create that little beginnings of a fold and then we stand it up and bend it over on itself and heavily crease each of those sides as we're folding it over on itself we're really applying pressure all the way across there. And once that's been folded, we're gonna come along here and we're gonna cut out these squares that were created by those folds. So we've got four squares in each corner. Once those are cut out, we're gonna take one side and fold it around. And I'm holding my scissors right up against my chipboard and I'm gonna give it just a little slight angle and I'm gonna go around all four sides making two cuts on each side for each little corner there. And then once that's done, we're gonna clean up our little cutoffs here. <laughs> and I do a little extra step here. I like to use this miter tool to remove some, some bulk. You can stop right here. This is how Tamara designed it. And as you can see, you get perfect corners every time with her design. There's You don't have to do this next step. But I don't like the bulk that's created here in these corners. And so for me, I like to use a miter tool and just remove some of this excess paper um, from each of those sides. I'll have a link in the description notes below on where you can find this tool. Is it is really handy. I know they have some that are smaller. They're like these tiny little corner ones. I like this one because it's longer. So no matter the size, it's gonna you know reach across. And it also works as a really nice straight edge because it's heavy, um, heavy stainless steel. So it's, you know, makes for a nice straight edge that will never warp. So now that we have our chipboard attached to our cardstock, it's time to come around here and start gluing it down. So I like to run a bead of glue right along the edge of where the chipboard meets the cardstock. And then I'm just filling it in, stand it up, give it a little wiggle into place, bend it over, and really smooth it out, okay? Clean up any glue as we go along. Just kind of squeegeeing it out here from the sides. I'm really just making sure that this is a nice even stick and that the chipboard and the cardstock are kind of becoming one. There's not gonna be any separation between the two. I like to do opposite sides and I'm gonna go ahead and finish placing my glue and wrapping this around, I'll be right back. And once I've wrapped all of my sides around my chipboard, it's time to do the other one in the same way. And once both of our covers are wrapped, it's time to retrieve our um, spine from under my mat. And we're gonna attach the spine to the front and back covers. I'm just gonna put a small bead of glue, oh, about a 16th to an eighth of an inch from the edge here. If I feel like I've gone over, I just take my thumbnail across and kind of draw that glue back. And then about a quarter of an inch from the spine on one of the wings, I'm gonna come along with a bead of glue and then just fill in the rest of that wing with glue. I know I say this all the time, it's not a lot of glue, it's just a lot of coverage. So I'm just trying to spread it out as thinly as possible and cover as much surface area with the thinnest little bit of glue that I can. Once that's in place, I'm going to butt the edge of my 
uh, covered chipboard up next to the edge of the spine chipboard and really press it into place. You can see how it's lifting it up. You give it a nice firm burnishing right there. Flip it over and I'm spreading any excess glue out towards the sides. I don't wanna go towards that spine. I don't wanna get glue in between the spine and the cover. So I'm really kind of pressing that out. I'm gonna double check, see, look, I got some glue between the spine and the cover. I do not want that. So I do like to take a um, microfiber cloth and just kind of polish that back. I think that's good. Let's clean up any other glue that has seeped out here. Burnish it again. I was thinking I might have been a little heavy handed on that, but that's okay, we're gonna fix it. So that's just fine, we've got that pulled back. I don't wanna pull it back too much though because I still want that glue to hold where I need it to hold. I just wanted to make sure I didn't have glue where I didn't want the glue. And now I'm gonna take a couple of clamps and I'm just gonna place here, you can use, um, you know, if you if you don't have these little binder clips, you can use clothespins or, you know, whatever you like, right? Make sure I don't get too close there again this time. There we go. And then I'm coming about a quarter of an inch from the chipboard on the wings. Cover it with some glue. That's a little thinner bead than last time. Hopefully we won't have the same problems. Also, I do think, I wanna point out, I'm using, um, and that's long enough for the clamps. They don't need to be on there that long. I am using shimmer cardstock, and I'm kind of wondering if that might be it. Regular cardstock tends to absorb the glue better, and I'm thinking that maybe this shimmer cardstock, it's just a little slippery still for a minute, so it was sliding in there. I'm also noticing that I'm off by like a 32nd of an inch on my <laughs> <laughs> on one of my cover cuttings, but that's gonna be okay. I'm kind of a recovering perfectionist, so I'm trying to not let it bother me, but it is a little. <laughs> All right, yeah, this one was a little better. I used a little less glue, and as you can see, none of it seeped in there. And even on this side where it did, we were able to clean it up fast enough, so that's okay. Give it another firm burnishing put a couple clamps on there. And yes, there is glue on my cardstock. And yes, it does show up because of the shimmer paper. But once it has set for a little bit longer, I don't want to touch it yet. But once it has set and is fully dried, then I can come back over with a rubber eraser and I can sort of rub that glue off. If I try to do it right now, it has seeped in the moisture ever so slightly into the fibers and I can end up tearing my paper. So I don't want to do it yet. All right. Now that we've got our front and back cover attached to our spine, it's time to add our inside piece here. And I'm beginning with a piece that is, you know, like a scant four and a half. So like I'm saying four and seven sixteenths by somewhere around 10 inches. I've cut this a little longer than 10 inches to begin with because I want to lay it on here and mark for my final fitting on it. So it's like closer to 11 inches right now. And I'm just laying this on here. I wanna have the same reveal all the way around. I wanna, I wanna make sure it's not overhanging anywhere, but I do like it to come all the way to the edge, if at all possible. This is my squared up corner here. There we go. I think that looks really good. And I'm feeling with my fingers that it isn't, you know, it's not protruding beyond the edges there. And once I have it where I want it to be, then I'm just gonna make a couple little tick marks here on where I need to trim this down, making sure I haven't wiggled it. And it looks to me like that's about where it needs to be. So now I'll get my trimmer out, make a couple quick cuts. And now that we've trimmed it down and I'm dry fitting it, it's exactly where I want it to be. So I'm gonna remove my adhesive from the back. Now, I use some of my scraps for this one. A full sheet would obviously be easier to remove, but this is gonna work out just fine. I'm gonna remove the tape from one edge only. And because I have scraps, I'm having to sort of peel these off in different sections. Um, you probably won't have to do that, but if you have scraps, you can see how I do that. Um, so I'm peeling that back. This is gonna be my side with my exposed adhesive. I'm lining everything up all along here, making sure that I'm exactly where I want it to be, okay? 
And once I get that in place, I'm just gonna drop this down and smooth it out. And then I can peel back the rest of this adhesive and it's gonna lay exactly where it's supposed to be. And then I'm just gonna come over it with a um, some sort of a burnishing tool. And really, I'm really spreading this out as best as I can. This is, it's really important that I have good contact, that there's no air bubbles between this anywhere because this is what's gonna give our album structure. And then I'm gonna just gently come into these little creases here on these joints where the front and back cover attached to the spine. There we go. And then this one, same thing. Really just kind of rubbing back and forth, making sure that that adhesive is really into that joint. And then, pressing it out and there we go we now have our front and back cover attached to our spine and I think it looks really great I do see a little bit of glue here that that did come out um it's not ideal I'm gonna be honest I'm not real happy with that but I'm gonna try yep I can rub some of that back that works yep and this one and I'm thinking it's just because it's the shimmer cardstock. So if you were to use like artisan cardstock or other cardstock for your album construction, I don't think you're gonna have this problem at all. In fact, I don't have that problem with other things. There we go, I think that looks great. Now we have our album base built and it is just the cutest little mini mini. I, I do like making these, <laughs> a lot of fun. So I'm gonna set this aside and let's go ahead and work on building our hinges. So if you've watched me before on any of my tutorials, you know that I do this weird little hinge attachment and it looks like this. It's where the, the hinges are basically floating away from the spine and the reason I like it is it allows the pages to open up fully flat as they lift away from the spine in doing so. And it takes some of the stress off of the hinges where they attach to the spine because there is some articulation in there, there's some movement. So when you start loading up pages, it's not, um, it's not really pulling at that attachment with the same force that it would if it were just a fixed spine. That being said, you're welcome to do a fixed spine. There's nothing wrong with a fixed spine. This is just something that I have come up with doing because I like for my pages to lay flat. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. And I'm also gonna show you how to just, you can if you just wanna make the hinges and attach it as a fixed, um, fixed hinge on your spine, that is more than fine as well. So there's something else that's a little different about this. I'm gonna, I started to go onto the hinges here, but I wanna point this out to you. I actually made my hinges and my hinge, ta hinge attachment a quarter of an inch shorter than my pages on this one. And that is unusual for me. I almost always have my hinge height the same height as my page height. The reason I did this though, is because on this one, as you can see the design, was I rounded all of the corners, even the ones where they attach to the hinges. And in order to do that, I needed that to be a shorter, um, a shorter height in order for them to attach in that place. I used my quarter inch corner rounder, and so I reduced that height by a quarter of an inch. So that's why they're not going to be the same height as the pages. The pages are four and a quarter inches. The hinges and the hinge attachment are only gonna be four inches in height. So just wanted to point that out. We're gonna begin with the hinges. And for that piece, we need a piece that measures three and a half by four inches. We're gonna put it in on the three and a half inch side and we're gonna score as follows. We're gonna score at three eighths of an inch, seven eighths of an inch, one and a quarter inches, one and three quarters of an inch, two and a quarter inches, two and five eighths, and three and one eighth. And this is an odd series of hinge scoring. I will point that out and I, I admit that, okay? And so the way these are scored and and are gonna be folded. We have a 3 eighths of an inch section here and a half an inch section here. Those are, those are actually gonna be folded together to make our first hinge. It's just that the front part of that hinge is an eighth of an inch shorter so that it won't catch as it's folding forward and back. Sometimes that little lip will catch. So I went ahead and rather than trimming it on the back end, I'm just building it in on the front. So these two, first two here are your hinges. 
This second section here that's 3 eighths of an inch wide, that's your first gusset. Now you have your second set of hinges for page two and both of those are just a half an inch, like, like, they, like all of the hinges are gonna be a half an inch tall. It's just the front and the back ones are cut to 3 eighths of an inch so we have that extra room. So the second set of hinges here are a half an inch each, so they're scored at one and three quarters and two and a quarter. Those are gonna get folded for the second page of hinges. Then we have another three eighths of an inch gusset, another half inch hinge on the front side of it, and on the back side of it, three eighths of an inch to give us that little bit of give for movement. So I know it sounds odd, but that's how it works out, and I do, I do like the way that works. So now I'm simply gonna fold and burnish all of my score marks. So the first and the last one are gonna be mountain folds. And I like to go ahead and do those first. These are 3 8 of an inch wide pieces. I don't want them to, um, I, I, just, I just think it's easier to fold them first. I'm trying to be more careful with them. Sometimes the pieces on the ends can, I don't know, they can sort of go askew. You don't have as much of a length on the sides to line them up to make sure you're in the right place. And so I just like to fold those first. Plus I feel like I get, have a little more leverage when the, the overall sheet is flat and I'm just making those end folds. I can kind of fold it over on itself easier. So once we have those two mountain folds, the next fold from either which way you're coming from is gonna be a valley fold, okay? And we're gonna be working on either side of this gusset, which is the, that 3 8 of an inch section here. So a second valley fold for the other side of that gusset. And I am gonna open this up and see, I'm trying to make sure my top and bottom are lined up. If your hinges are not straight, your pages will not be straight. <laughs> it's really important that you get this part straight. I'm gonna fold this over on itself. And this is a great way to check. So that fold of the hinge fold between, you know, the second page of folds, that is the halfway point. And so we're really making sure that everything is square and straight and true all around there, and it is. And then we're gonna go to the two valley folds on either side of that 3 eighths of an inch mark, and it's wanting to fold crooked on me, so I have to be really careful to make sure I'm lined up top and bottom, my, they're straight, and I've got kind of an even spacing here, okay? And do our second little valley fold on the other side of that gusset. And we've already done that final mountain fold, so that's done. So when they are folded together then, we're going to have a series of three hinges and two gussets, just like this, okay? You can see that. So I'm gonna turn it over, we're gonna work from the back side, kind of open it up, and I'm gonna apply a small amount of glue on one of these end pieces here. Get it all glued up, bend it over on itself and press it out. And as you can see, I'm three, or I'm an eighth of an inch shy from that fold. And that's gonna be just fine. It's just gonna give us a little bit of extra um, insurance that that edge is not gonna catch when it's being moved forward or backwards, okay? So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other one. And once that one's glued into place, then we only have the center hinge to glue together. And so I'm gonna, just gonna pick one side of one of these half inch sections, apply some glue to it, fold it over on itself, and give it a nice firm burnishing, making sure that I'm cleaning up any glue that may seep out as I go and just really sticking that down to itself. I'm also making sure that the folds are gonna be flush on the bottom, that I don't have one that's taller than the other one. And if I do, this is a good point where I can kind of um, very slightly finesse that back into place. The glue is still wet, the folds are still malleable, and I can sort of work those hinges to get them to lay exactly the way that I want them to, okay? Just like that. Fold it back the other way and do the same thing. There we go. So now I've got my hinges all glued together and they look something like this, okay? Now, if you want a fixed hinge on your spine, 
all you would simply do is apply glue to the back side of these two gussets here, place it in the center portion of your spine, okay? And once you've got that position, then you're just gonna carefully burnish it down and, and make sure that it's stuck into place. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this aside and we're gonna work on our hinge attachment right now. So for the hinge attachment, we've got a piece that measures two and a half by four. And on the two and a half inch side, we're gonna score at one half inch, five eighths of an inch, three quarters of an inch, one and three quarters of an inch, one and seven eighths, and two. And what this is and what this always is, is you double the, the width of your spine and add a half an inch to it. And the reason being is, is you've got the width of your spine is the center section here. You have half of the spine on either sides. And then in order to create this little gusset in here, this little sort of accordion gusset here, I have scored to create two one eighth inch sections on either side. So I've got a little quarter of an inch section on either side here that add up to be a half an inch. So you double the width and add a half an inch to it. That's how I came up with the two and a half inches for the width there. So again, I'm scoring it at a half an inch, five eighths of an inch, three quarters of an inch, one and three quarters, one and seven eighths, and two. And when folding and burnishing these, they are gonna be folded as follows. It's going to be mountain, valley, mountain, mountain, valley, mountain. And I like to do all of my mountain folds first. And I will show you why when we get to the, that little valley fold. So I'm gonna go through here and carefully fold and burnish all four of these mountain folds. And once I've done that, I end up with this sort of rectangular tube here that looks something like that. And now in order to get these tiny little eighth of an inch folds in here for this, this gusset, I'm gonna open up one side and on one of them with the two folds here, I'm just gonna hold that in place. I'm gonna take my scoring tool and run it right along that score that I just made as I'm applying light pressure from this top of the fold with my finger. So I'm, I'm just slightly, lightly pressing down on that. And once it starts kind of folding over on itself, sometimes I'll move to, sometimes I'll move to something with a little bit of a lower profile as it's kind of folding over on itself. And once that starts sort of falling into place, it's gonna follow the path of least resistance, which is that score mark that we just made. And then we can start squeezing it together. And I, I just really wanna make sure that those two mountain folds are meeting up and aligning perfectly there as I'm running along the, the line here and I'm squeezing them into place. And then once they're all where I want them to be, then I'll go over it with my bone folder. And there you go. Now we've got this really nice little um, accordion fold gusset here on the side. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other one. And then once I feel like it's starting to fall where I want it to be, I'm just gonna squeeze those two pieces together, being careful to line up the mountain folds right on top of each other. I'm stacking them right on top of each other, just like that, okay? And so now that we've got this in place, now it's time for me to attach my hinges to this attachment system. And this is where um, you would, if you wanted it just to be fixed to the spine, you would do the same thing, but you would just place it on the spine. So I'm gonna come all along here and place some glue all along the back side of these two gussets. And once I've got my glue in place, I'm going to line it up right on top, centering it left and, and right, and um, lining up my edges at the top and the bottom because they're identical in their height. Just making sure my left and right are centered. And once I've got it where I want it to be, then I'm gonna come over with my bone folder and really give it that nice firm burnishing that it needs, being sure to move my hinges to the left and to the right, and really working on that articulation and the movement of them as I'm pressing them into place, making sure that they can, they can move. There we go. 
Now we've got those attached and they look really great. And yes, there is glue on here and yes, I'm going to clean it up, but I just wanna let this um, uh, paper, I, I want the glue to be really dry on that paper before I start rubbing at it. And now we're gonna attach this into our album by placing glue, it doesn't matter which side, on one, one of these half inch wings here on either side of that accordion fold gusset that we just made. And once that's in place, it's going to be centered top and bottom, but all the way to the edge of this, um, of the spine. Because this spine is one inches wide and our entire attachment piece is gonna be one inch wide once we glue these two half inch pieces down. And I like that because I don't have to worry about centering it like that. I know that I'm going to be aligned on here. Um, and then I'm gonna put glue on the other side here, on the other little wing. And I'm sliding it in and I'm, I can feel it sort of butt up against its counterpart in there. So it's right where it needs to be. We are centered top and bottom, left and right. And I take my bone folder and just slide inside of the space here that's created, okay, from our, our hinge attachment here. I slide my bone folder in there and just really making sure that it's well burnished. And once that's in place, um, because I have sort of flattened these out, I'm gonna go ahead and recrease my little gussets here on my side. And there we go, we now have our hinges attached to our uh, our album. Now, let's move on to making the pages. For the pages, we are gonna have three pieces that measure four and a quarter by eight and a half, okay? And then we've also got three page inserts that measure four and a half by three and a half. And we'll address those here in just a minute. To begin with, let's start with our pages and we're gonna place them in our scoreboard on the eight and a half inch side and we're gonna score them at four and a quarter. Once scored, we're gonna fold and burnish. Once we folded and burnished our score marks, now I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna round all four corners with my corner rounder. Remember, I, I'm trying something different on my pages and I'm gonna round all of them. Why? I don't know. <laughs> it was just something I thought added a nice fun little design element to it. Um, is it necessary? Nope, not at all. But then once I did it, I had to figure out, oh, what do I do with the hinges? They're the same height and it's sort of, I don't know. I don't know, I just did it. <laughs> I don't have a reason, I wish I did, I'm sorry. And my corner chomper does never, it never cuts straight. So I always have to go back and cut it on the other side too. So, And so this is just gonna sit on here. We're gonna center it top and bottom. And you can sort of see how those curves come in and meet the hinges at that point. I butt the page up next to the hinge once it's where I want it to be. And then when I press the hinge back over it, it kind of presses the page out slightly. And that's gonna be just the exact spacing I need from the edge of the um, hinge to the gusset apply some glue and I'm gonna run a very thin bead of glue right along the page. And then I'm gonna go ahead and push it back on over there, press it down. We've got a little glue seeping out and that's okay. And then, um, and I, I do wanna check and make sure it's where I want it to be because if I have to, I can take it and off. So I'm going to place some glue along the edge of the hinge all the way to the top. There's a little curve there that's hanging over and I do wanna kinda of get that. I'm only coming about halfway into the hinge with my glue. I'm gonna come along the bottom of my page and that's gonna create the pocket that I want. And then I'm gonna come along the edge of the page on the opposing page. And that's why I only went halfway over here with my glue. This little bit will make up for it without having any extra over the edges. And once that gets folded into place, we've got that all pressed down there. And I'm just smooth it out. 
cleaning up any glue that may seep out and that looks great. Okay, so now I'm gonna move on to the next one. Like I said, I'm gonna place it right up next to that hinge. I'm gonna move the hinge over on itself. I'm making sure that I'm lined up with the page just underneath it. It's a little easier on the second one because I only have to line up the top and bottom with that. Open it up, place a thin bead of glue along the edge of the page, come down about halfway on the hinge with my adhesive. Press it back on over onto itself, just like that. Spread it out, cleaning up any glue that may seep out as we go. And then I'm gonna put the glue along the top of the hinge, the folded part of the hinge, coming only about halfway down, all along the bottom, and then along this one edge here of the page. Fold it over on itself, give it a nice firm burnishing. Really spreading out that glue. Checking both sides, it's nice and straight. I'm very happy with it. And then I'm gonna go on to the last one and I'll be right back. So now we've got all of our pages attached in our album and I'm really happy with the way they look. Let's go ahead and set this aside. And oh, and you can see that they're gonna pull away from the spine when necessary. And so that's kind of cool. So I'm gonna set this aside and we're gonna work on our page inserts. Now I, I don't necessarily decorate these at this point, but I do like to make these at this point and place them into the pockets of my pages as a visual reference for where the top and bottom of the pages are and that way I know which one is the front and back and it just helps keep me straight so that I'm not making a bunch of mistakes um, where I'm putting things in upside down. And the reason I do this this way is because I have had moments where I made a lot of mistakes putting things in upside down, right? And I think I wanna use my spider web border punch on these. I think that that would be a really nice effect. So I'm just trying to kind of line these out. I know that's gonna be the edge. It looks like this is probably gonna be centered here on the page. I'm gonna have not full fan of spider webs, but that's okay. Um, there will be some kind of cutoffs on the ends and that's just fine. And what I mean by that is gonna be kind of like this. We're gonna punch these for our tops. Okay, and I'm gonna round these bottom corners because I just think it helps it to slide in and out so much easier. And it's a nice finish, right? I mean, it, it really is. Okay, so just like that. And then when we open these up and slip them in, yep, that's just perfect. I'm gonna have a little bit of it, you know, hanging out the top, showing through the top here. And that way I'm gonna always know where the top and bottom is of my album. And it helps me not to make those types of mistakes. I'm gonna go ahead and get the other two cut and placed in the pockets and I'll be right back. Now that we have our pages installed, our page inserts in place, it's time to go ahead and start working on the front and back cover. For me, I like to be able to do it at this point because I can open this up, I can lay it perfectly flat. I go ahead and do the page inserts, like I said, so I've got a constant visual reminder so I'm not accidentally putting something in upside down. And now we're, gonna, we're ready to go ahead and cut our pattern paper for our front and back cover and our spine decoration. So I've cut my pieces for my front and back cover and for my spine, and I am actually choosing not to use any of the pattern paper from the collection to decorate this except for one little tiny piece. And that is this little piece here that I'm gonna put on the spine of these keys. And they were here in this border strips page and they were the only ones that were oriented um, in such a way that I could have them going this way. Um, and I thought they looked good. I thought it, I thought it worked out. So I do wish more of these companies would orient the border strips sometimes to where they were, um, 
you know, rather than looking at them from left to right, it was top to bottom. I think that would be really fun. But eh, anyway, so I went ahead and, and put that piece on there. But other than that, I'm just using the decorative papers. I think that it looks really neat to have this on here. And I do love this effect of the velvet here. I'm going to choose to use this shoe on the front cover. I'm thinking of either putting the trick or treat, boo. I think October 31st is going to be too big. It is, and I'm actually thinking I might put that over here on the back. Not sure yet. It is nice to have all of these little bits of ephemera already made up. It's going to make it really easy. There's this one that's hey boo, and I might want to do that. I kind of like the hey boo, but um, I think that that's probably a better sentiment for a card. So I'm thinking trick or treat. I'm thinking trick or treat works. And we will just do that. I like the way that looks. So I've gone ahead and cut out all of my pieces for my front and back cover and spine decorations. And I'm choosing to not use any of the pattern paper from the collection with one exception. I did go ahead and pull this border strip here out of the pattern paper. It was sort of positioned like this on the strip. And I went ahead and harvested that one out because it was the only one that's oriented top to bottom. <laughs> All the rest of them are left to right. And I thought that that worked and it, it does. It, it works just fine. I cut the glitter paper, the black glitter paper. I have two of them that are four and seven sixteenths. So just shy of four and a half by four and seven sixteenths. So it's basically just shy of a four and a half by four and a half inch square. And then on these other two pieces here, I used these dies. It's a waffle flower set of nesting dies. There's 17 in it. I love these waffle flower nesting sets because they are um, spaced very close together in their sizing. And so for the kind of mirrored purple one, the larger one is a four inch square. And then for the velvet, I went ahead and cut that out of a three and three quarters of an inch square from this nesting die set. Now, the only thing left to do before inking our edges and gluing these down is to place some ribbon on here for our closure. I would probably um, like to use a purple ribbon, kind of this sort of, I don't know, fuchsia -y purple ribbon, but I don't have the right color of it. So instead I'm gonna go with this black satin, which I think is gonna be just great. We're gonna have a lot of textures and tones for the color black, and I like the way that's gonna end up looking. So I've got two pieces that are roughly 12 inches in length, maybe a little bit extra on those but I always rather have too much than too little, right? And as always, I'm just gonna center this on my mat using the grid on my mat. And I'm gonna come to the, what is it? Two and a quarter inch mark is gonna be my center placement. Go ahead and peel off one side of this double stick tape. Place my ribbon on, and the ribbon itself is, I think it's like, it's five eighths of an inch wide ribbon. So I'm just gonna kind of eyeball to center it on here. I may not be exactly centered. When I put the ribbon on the other side, I always try to line it up with this first one I've put down. And the reason being that um, it's really more important for it to look like it's symmetrical than to actually be symmetrical, if that makes sense. So when coming to the other side, this is actually a lot easier. I'm just going to place some tape roughly in that center position, peel off the back side of the backing, and now I'm lining my ribbon up with the ribbon underneath it and just gonna let that fall into place like that. Go ahead and cover that up with some more tape. And now we're ready to go ahead and ink our edges of our papers here and stick them down. I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I will be right back. I'm gonna come around the edges of some of this ephemera that I made with this um, brush pen. It's a Faber-Castell um, Pit Artist Pen. It's in the Black Noir color, and it is the brush tip. And I'm just coming from the back side, and I'm running that tip, because if I, if I slip, I'm gonna slip on the back side and not on the front. Although on this, it really doesn't matter, because on this mirrored finish, it just it wipes right off. But I'm gonna come all the way around here and just, you know, that the white core is very jarring on that black velvet. It stands out. And so this is gonna knock some of that back so that it's not, um, you can't see it. <laughs> and I got ink all over my fingers, but what else is new? <laughs> all right, now we've got our front and back cover and spine all decorated. And I think it looks really great. Sorry about the glare. I've got some sun coming in through the window here and trying to find the best way to show this to you. But doesn't that look fantastic? 
I'm super excited about it. Now we can go ahead and move on to the inside and we're gonna begin with the inside front cover. And for the inside front cover, we've got a pocket that um, we're gonna need a piece that measures one and three quarters of an inch by four and a half inches and a card insert that's gonna measure three and a half by seven. We aren't gonna make any score marks for the pocket. This is just a simple pocket that's glued down on three sides, but I am gonna go ahead and use my punch. And since I've started with the spider webs, we're just gonna keep going with that. I'm gonna go ahead and punch a decorative edge here on this one. And then we're gonna score our card insert in half at three and a half inches. And fold that so the finished side is going to be a three and a half inch square card like this and I am going to round the corners with the corner rounder as well so let me go ahead and burnish this and round those and then the pocket is just going to get glued down here on three sides we need to go ahead and put our decorative paper on there first so for the pattern paper I've cut two pieces that are four and seven sixteenths inch square and I've cut one piece that is fifteen sixteenths by four and seven sixteenths of an inch. So it's basically, if we don't wanna think about all the sixteenths, right? It's just a hair short of four and a half inches tall, and it's just a hair short of one inch wide. So um, if, the six, if the sixteenths <laughs> seem like a lot, you can just think about it that way. And so I'm gonna go ahead and glue these down into place. When I get to the one here for the um, for the spine, it gets slipped right inside here. In fact, it looks to me like I need to trim this down a little bit, but it slides right in there and we're gonna glue that down as well. I went ahead and did the back inside, the inside back cover as well, because it's an identical page. I went ahead and cut a second card insert for the back as well as for the front here. And these are just gonna slip right in here. I've got another one here for the back. And I did go ahead and cover these with a pattern paper. Now for these matting pieces here, I cut them at one and an eighth by, th by four and three eighths of an inch tall. And that was for the front and back cover. And that's because I used the punches to cut down my pocket here. So if I hadn't cut out this portion here from the punch, then it would have been a larger piece. In the cutting guide, the measurements are for the larger piece. So in the cutting guide, the matting pieces for the inside front and back cover pockets are gonna be listed as an inch and five eighths by four and three eighths of an inch high. Now, I'm just telling you, if you use one of these spider web punches, it's gonna be an inch and an eighth by four and three eighths of an inch high. But if you use a different punch, you're gonna to have to measure the width on that and adjust accordingly. I am gonna decorate these card inserts, but I'm not gonna do it right now because it's just something I'd rather use scraps for. So as I'm moving through it, I will you know, come back at the end and we'll decorate those. So now it's time to go ahead and move on. So to page one, we need two pieces that measure four and a quarter by three and a half, and one piece that measures three and a half by seven, and that's gonna be another card insert. So I'm gonna go ahead and score the three and a half by seven inch piece. I'm gonna score that at three and a half, and that's just gonna get folded in half like the other two were, and we are gonna round those corners and set that one aside. For our gatefold pieces, we have the two pieces here that measure four and a quarter by three and a half, and we're gonna score those at a half an inch on the three and a half inch side, or in my case, I'm just gonna score it at three because that's gonna do the same thing. Um, it's easier for me than to reach over and to try to do that little half inch in that little, in that little spot there. I'm gonna fold and burnish them. And then because I rounded all the corners of my pages, I'm gonna have to round all four corners, including the side with the fold here on this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and round all those corners using my quarter inch corner mount corner rounder and then these are just going to get glued onto the right and left hand side of page one they are intended to overlap so that they can be closed and they're going to open up like this so i'm going to go ahead and put the glue on my little flaps here and glue them down one thing i want to point out though is be mindful on the hinge side not to go beyond that page and in fact you know the edge of the page where it goes to the hinge there in fact i'm going to scooch it over just a tiny bit. I'm not gonna come quite to the edge there, okay? Because I wanna make sure that it's got enough room to be able to open. In fact, let's go ahead and check it. So it's opening without catching on that hinge there. And that's just what I wanna see. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and burnish that down, glue the other side down, and I'll be right back. For the non-hinged side of the page, we do not have to be mindful of the edges or in any way back it off. We are literally gonna stack it on in the exact position as the page. And once we get that right where we want it to be, I'm gonna take a couple clamps and just place it here so that um, so that, that glue can set. And once that has set, I'm gonna go ahead and take off the clamps, open it up and just make sure that we're good on the inside. I, I had burnished it down once, but I'm just making sure all looks great. And now we're gonna put a couple of magnets on here. Normally I would just use one of my larger magnet sets, but I'm out of them. So I'm gonna use two of these small ones here. And these are eight millimeter by one millimeter magnets. So they're, they're a little bit, quite a bit narrower in their width wise. And they're nice strong magnets. There's nothing wrong with them. I just, um, because I don't have the larger ones, I'm just gonna use two of them. So I'm gonna place one towards the top and one towards the bottom of this gatefold. So if you can see on this one, I actually placed a single magnet behind this little round overlap portion there, um, which is great and I like that. On this one, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna, well, maybe I will. Maybe I'll do it with the spider web over it. Let me get my pattern paper ready and I'll be right back. I want to show you what I went ahead and did. I cut the pattern paper to cover these. This one here is four and an eighth by four and an eighth squared, rounded all the corners. This one here is two and seven eighths by four and an eighth and rounded all the corners. That's for these two here. And then I needed two more that were two and seven eighths by four and a quarter. I'm sorry, four and an eighth, two and seven eighths by four and an eighth. And that was these two pieces, um, the one here and the one here. I went ahead and used this die. Um, it's an Echo Park Spooky Spiderweb die set. And um, it looks like it was from the Halloween Party collection. And I went ahead and used that die, cut it out. I did put some adhesive paper, adhesive backing on the paper. It's cut out of artisan cardstock. And I did that before I ran it through the die cutting machine. It took me forever to pick all these little tiny sticky pieces out of here, but I did it. <laughs> And I do think it's worth it. I think it's a really cute little effect. And so that's what I use to encase my magnets. And then I'm gonna go ahead and glue these down and we're good to go on page one. All right, so page one is now complete. We've got all of our pattern paper down. And yes, I know you can see the magnets here on this. That is in part because it is shimmer cardstock and it just shows up. And in part because I tend to go around them and I actually emphasize the magnets there. It doesn't bother me that I can see the magnets. If it bothers you, you can use a different method to apply yours, or you can use the thinner metal strips or washers or things like that. There's all sorts of tricks out there. It doesn't bother me. My magnets have a job to do, and when they you know, protrude up from the surface, they tend to do their job better. So I like that. I um, like that it's really stuck down there, and that's important to me. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take my card um, insert that we haven't covered yet because I'm waiting to cover all of these till the end when I have some scraps. That just simply lives in there. We're gonna put it in its place and go ahead and move on to pages two and three. For pages two and three, we need two pieces that measured four and a quarter by one and three quarters. And that's gonna be for some pockets. That's these two here. We're gonna need a photo mat that measures three and a half by three and a half. And I've got a couple tag pieces here, um, two of them that are two and a quarter by three and a quarter. And the reason that I chose the size two and a quarter by three and a quarter is, well, partially because it's a really small book and so they have to be small, but partially because in this paper pad, there are these cut aparts here that measure two by three. And I thought that they would fit very nicely on there for a little tag element. 
and I wanted to use that. So I wanna point out to you, make your tags whatever size work for you. You could have some cutouts that are sized differently that you wanna put in your um, you know, albums or an album like this or whatever, and just go ahead and tag them appropriately for your needs and your wants. Now for these tags, we're gonna keep it very simple. We're simply gonna round all four of the corners with our quarter inch corner rounder. And as I'm laying out my paper here, I'm realizing that I really wanna use this page here with the cat and the cauldron and the hats as my um, backing and also I want it to kind of carry over into this gusset covering here. I think that that would be really cool. And so in order to do that, I really don't think I'm gonna be able to do any edge punching on these pockets. So I'm not gonna use my spider web edging on these pockets here. I'm just gonna glue them straight down because this paper isn't wide enough to, to cover underneath there without you noticing. And so that's just how that's gonna work for me. And I'm, and I'm kind of jumping around here. Sorry, I was starting with the tags. I stopped on the tags. I know I wanna use some of these pieces for it. But before I decided which ones I wanted to use, I wanted to figure out which pattern paper I was going to use for these pages because, you know, that might matter, right? I, I didn't want something to clash. So now that I know which pattern paper I want to use for this page, this is how we're going to do this. I'm going to go ahead and cut the height to the correct height, which is four and one eighth inch. So now we've gone ahead and cut that. And this paper here is six inches wide. I know that my gusset in here is three eighths of an inch. So I need a quarter of an inch piece of paper to go over this gusset. So half of six is three, and I need to reserve a quarter of an inch out of the center. So I'm gonna come over an eighth of an inch. So I'm gonna cut this at two and seven eighths right here. And then this cutoff piece here, I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna cut it to two and seven eighths. And I have essentially cut a quarter of an inch strip out of the center of this um, paper that's gonna line up just like that. And I think that's gonna look really cute how it sort of carries through the middle of the gusset, kind of carries that pattern through. And um, yeah, I like that. So now I'm gonna go ahead and round these two corners, the corners that are closest to the hinges, that are closest to the gusset. I'm gonna round those with my quarter inch corner rounder. And for my gusset itself, remember this is a quarter of an inch short. The, the gusset is only four inches tall. The pages are four and a quarter inches tall. So I need to reduce my gusset by a quarter of an inch, but I wanna do, a, I wanna do an eighth of an inch from the top and an eighth of an inch from the bottom so that I make sure that that pattern continues to line up. So I'm gonna place it in my trimmer here and I'm at four and an eighth. I'm gonna bring it to four inches and trim that, turn it around, and I'm gonna to come to three and seven eighths of an inch and trim that. And now I have a piece that's sized appropriately for my gusset, but that still lines up with the pattern on the pieces on either side. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> So now I'm going to go ahead and ink my edges and glue it down. And now that I've got my pattern paper down, I'm going to go ahead and round the corners on my pockets. I've got these two outer corners that need to be rounded. And I'm looking at that and I'm realizing that, i take this out so I can see it a little bit better. And this one out. So I want to be able to see the top of the page here. So I'm looking at this and I'm realizing that my pocket... Oh no, it's not. I thought it might be a little too long, but see, that's why I had to take these out to be able to see. Um, sometimes when there's things hanging out of the top there, it's hard to figure out if I need to line it out. So I'm gonna round the edges on my pockets and glue them down on three sides. I'm gonna glue them on the top and the bottom and one of the sides that goes along the edge here. matting pieces down and I cut them to four and an eighth by an inch and five eighths and so that's the sizing that worked out for that and they are really busy I mean like really really busy so I'm thinking that since I've got the cats over here that this might be a good place for me to put a cat on maybe one of these sides maybe like a spider and a couple bats just to try to break that up a little bit because I don't really see this as a place that we're gonna be putting any photos or anything over it. It's just 
purely dec decorative little place here. I think that's good. We're just going to go with one cat, three bats. <laughs> I don't think we need the spider and he looks a little lost over there without a web. So since we didn't put the webs on everything, so we're just going to peel the backing off again. Remember, this is that um, velvet material with the adhesive backing and I'm putting a little tiny bit of art glitter glue on here not because I'm afraid the adhesive won't stick but because it'll give me just like a moment to reposition if necessary it won't grab hold immediately so I'm just going to kind of put our little cat here that works I love it I think that looks so cool <laughs> And then I'm gonna go ahead and stick these bats down and I'll be right back. My bats and my cat are now attached. I've got a little glue here that needs to dry before I can clean that up all the way. I went ahead and put my little uh, cut aparts on my tags or what are soon to be tags. And I'm getting out my tools to add some grommets for the top before I add some ribbon. So if you have a crocodile or whatever that thing is that you get from We Are Memory Keepers and, and you like that and that works for you, use, use that. I like to use a hammer and a punch and a grommet setting tool and actual grommets and that's how I set mine. So I'm gonna kind of center this, get my punch ready, and I kind of, I'm just eyeballing about where the center-ish is gonna be and then I'm gonna give it a couple whacks Go ahead and cut the other one also. And because I want them to line up, I'm gonna put the other one underneath it and I'm just gonna give it one whack here to sort of mark where it needs to go. Oh, wait, it punched all the way through. Never mind. <laughs> that works. And um, I do want to clean this out and make sure I get my little cutouts up here because I just recently glued those down and I don't want that glue to set inside of my um, hole punch here, my punch tool. There we go. All right, now we take the little tool here, place it down. I'm gonna put the washer over the back here, curved side up, take our setting tool, hold it in place and give it a few whacks. Isn't that great? I really just love the way these both come together. I think it looks so nice and professional and neat and clean and I just love it. And now we've got a couple little grommets in our tags and I think they look really great. Get my tools put away and I am gonna get some ribbon to put through those real quick. I've got some quarter inch double face satin ribbon that I am going to place in here. They're about roughly about six inches long and I'm sort of just folding it, pulling it through. I'm putting the loop through from the front side towards the back and that way when I loop the little tails through, that loop kind of comes to the front and makes it a nice little finish. I'm gonna tighten it up a little bit preliminarily Go ahead and cut my ends off so that they're an even amount. I'm going to pull this back just a little bit and take my glue bottle just underneath there and squeeze out a little dollop of glue. And then I'm going to squeeze out a little bit of dollop of glue underneath that front piece that's going to pull around to the front. And that is going to hold it in place uh, once it's set so that it won't slip out. I'm going to put a clamp on that just to hold it go ahead and do the other one. I like to use a lighter to um, kind of sear my ends so that they don't fray. If that's not something you're comfortable with, you can use fray check or you can just use art glitter glue or reptile glue. I have used both interchangeably and had no problems with it. You just put a little dot on your finger and just kind of tap the ends of it and um, that will keep it from fraying too. And once that's just been on there for even that short amount of time, that's enough to help that set in place. And we now have our tags that are just super cute, aren't they? So I'm gonna slip these in our little pockets here, okay? And now we are ready for pages four and five. For pages four and five, we need two pieces that measure four and a quarter by three inches. We need two pieces that measure four and a quarter by four inches. And we need photo mats that are three and a half by three and a half squared. Now I'm gonna begin with the photo mats because I know I'm gonna to have to round those corners. And we're just gonna come around and uh, use a quarter inch corner rounder on all four corners. And for the pages, I'm gonna reference over here to this one that I did. We've got a flap that opens this way like this, which is the top flap. 
and then one that opens out like this, which is the bottom flap. And then on this one, I used this um, border here to create, you know, kind of like a, this banner border to create a tuck spot for our photo mats. And I, I'm thinking I'm gonna actually use the spider web photo corners this time, but I'm not sure, I'm gonna look and see. So on these two pieces here, we've gotta make some score marks. On the top flaps that measure three inches by four and a quarter inches, we're gonna score that at a half an inch on the three inch side. So for me, I'm gonna score it at two and a half. You, you get your half inch however works for you. <laughs> And on the ones that measure four by four and a quarter, on the four inch side, we're gonna score that at one half inch. And we're gonna fold and burnish our score marks. And once I folded and burnished all of my score marks, I went ahead and rounded all of the corners with my quarter inch corner rounder, including all of the corners with the flaps. So I went ahead and rounded them while those flaps were folded in place. Those are gonna be glued down just like this. So the larger piece, it's gonna be glued down. Each of the flaps are gonna be on the edge of the page, the, the, the part that's opposite the hinge side. And on the smaller pieces, they're gonna be glued on top of those flaps on the side that's closer to the hinge side, just like that. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and glue these down onto each other in sort of like units like this. Go ahead and put the glue on the smaller pieces, the top pieces. Put that on that little flap, and it is going to go on top of the piece that's larger, not on the side, here's the side with the flap, it's gonna go on the other side on the top of it. And once our units are glued together, we're gonna to go ahead and glue it into our album by placing the glue on the flap of the larger piece and placing that on top of our pages. Now, because there is a fold involved on this one, I am gonna clamp it. And once these have been glued down, now we can go ahead and put our magnets in place. And this is gonna take a lot of magnets, y'all, don't be, don't be scared, it's gonna be okay. But we've got one magnet to connect here and then we're gonna have another set of magnets here underneath here. I'm gonna have one at the top and one at the bottom and that way it'll sort of reduce on the bulk that would be in a singular spot. So let me find my tape. So on this one, I'm not gonna go, you know, all the way to the, oh, wait, look at this. Here's something else to take into consideration. I've got a magnet right there. So I need to make sure that I'm not in competition with that magnet there. Hmm, but in, just in case, let's do this one towards the top. So on these pages here, now that we have our magnets in place, let's go ahead and put our pattern paper down. All right, so now we have our pattern paper on here and I think this turned out really cute. Isn't this adorable? And then it opens up like this. And instead of doing in this one, I had, these little banners here to hold our photo mats in place. Um, on this one here, I did the photo corners because I had them and they're just, I think they're the perfect touch. And so these just slip in and out. And if you don't wanna use the photo mat, you could simply put a photo over it or put a photo in here as well to sit behind these photo corners. The um, paper here, this was the hole at the top from the six by six paper pad. And I went ahead and used that piece and I just put a little decorative element with the spider over it. And I think it turned out really cute and I'm really happy with it. So now we're ready to move on to the last page, which is page six. For page six, we simply have one little flap here and it measures four and a quarter by three and a half. And we are going to score it at a half an inch on the three and a half inch side just like that. We're gonna go ahead and fold and burnish that, round all of the edges with our quarter inch corner rounder, apply some glue on the little tab here, and then we're gonna glue it down on this edge because it is on this fold and there's, you know, on this edge with a fold, I am gonna go ahead and clamp that just to hold it into place. While that's sitting and um, kind of getting ready, I'm gonna go ahead and cut my pattern paper for this one as well. All right, I've got my pattern paper ready to cover it. I've got one piece that's four and an eighth by four and an eighth, and I've got two pieces that are four and an eighth by two and seven eighths, and I rounded all four of the corners. Let's go ahead and take the clamps off, and we are gonna place a magnet on here, okay? I wanna put a little ribbon pull on here, and I know I've shown this before in other videos, but I'm gonna go over it again really quickly because I just did it on the other page, and I realized I didn't show you how I did it. Um, I take 
a small piece of ribbon. This one just happens to be a little bit over an inch long. I'm gonna fold it in half. I'm gonna place the fold on my grid line on my uh, mat. And then I'm gonna come over about 3 8 of an inch over and place some tape on there. So from the fold, I've got 3 8 of an inch over. I'm gonna wrap the tape around, peeling back one side, wrapping the other side around. And then I can cut this off at about an eighth of an inch wide at the tape, an eighth to a well, eighth to a quarter of an inch, somewhere around there. And then we're gonna peel off this tape and I'm gonna kind of eyeball, well, we might as well measure. Let's see where the center is. It's gonna be about there. It looks about right, but I need to come in a little bit more. And I want the ribbon to hang over um, a quarter of an inch. So the ribbon is sticking out from the whole fold about a quarter of an inch, like that. Okay, and now we'll go ahead and put some glue on our pattern paper and it just gives it such a nice little finish here. Well, if I center it, there we go. Just like that. Go ahead and give it a little bit of a burnishing, make sure I've got good contact. And I do, happy with that. And now I'll go ahead and put the glue on the rest of the paper and I'll be right back. All right, now we've got page six is complete and I think it looks super cute. I like it a lot. I'm thinking I might wanna add something on here. I don't know. This would be kind of a cool little tuck spot to add on there. Maybe we do one of these. I think I'm gonna do this one as a little tuck spot. I think that's super cute there and it does um, kind of complement with the one on the front. I could do this one which is a little more of a tie-in for the front. But I feel like it's a little too, too much of that. There we go, well, let's just do this one. I'm gonna peel off my backing here from the velvet sheet, and I'm gonna add just a little bit of glue, mostly so that I've got a little room, a little wiggle room in case I, I stick it down in the wrong spot. It gives me just that second to move it. Not a lot of time, but a little bit. Oh, that was gonna be a tuck spot. Hmm. Well, it's not gonna be a tuck spot. It's gonna be a decorative element now. <laughs> I've, there's adhesive all over the back and then I put glue all over the back. So we're just gonna roll with it. I think that's fine. That is so cute. Oh my goodness, I love it so much. All right, now I need to put some pattern paper on all of our page inserts as well as on these card inserts that we've got dispersed throughout. Let's see, not those. These I'm gonna leave as is. They're just gonna be uh, matting pieces. Don't have anything there. We've got this one. So we've got um, three card inserts and three page inserts. Let me get some pattern paper on those and I'll be right back. Okay, crafty friends, that's it. We have completed the full tutorial for this adorable four and a half by four and a half mini mini. It is the second in a series of four and it is also my contribution for week 10 of Sandy's 13 Frights Before Halloween 2022. And it is just so stinking cute. I love the way it feels. I love the velvet. I just think it's such a nice little addition. And let's go ahead and do a quick walkthrough here. It's got a tie closure. It opens up and on the front and back inside covers are identical. We simply have a little card insert here that can be used for photos, it can be used for journaling or whatever. A nice little pocket here. Page one opens up, it's kind of a little overlapping gatefold and it opens up like this. I went ahead and put some pattern paper on the little card insert in here. Isn't it cute? I love the way this lined out, and I just think this looks really, really cute inside here. This simply slips back into the uh, top pocket that is also shared by the page insert that's at the top here. So let's go ahead and pull that one out, slide this one in, and you can see I've got the little page insert here as well, and they both just slip into the same little pocket from our page. Isn't that great? Closes up. I love this little spider web addition. I think it's really cute. 
On pages two and three, we've got kind of mirror image pages here with some pockets and some tags. Super cute for journaling or photos or whatever it is that you'd like to have. And I love the velvet of these cutouts. This cat and these bats are just too, too, too cute. We've got another little page insert here that I've covered with some pattern paper. Pages four and five are also mirror image pages and they open out like this. We've got some photo corners here to hold these little photo mats, or you could just insert photos or whatever you like. You could take them out all together, and they certainly do stand on their own. They look just fine. I love the way the pattern paper continues through here. You can really see the hearts that were woven by the spider in her web, and I just think they're so pretty. And we did add these little velvet spiders over here to cover the holes from the branding strips on those papers and was able to use that, you know, make good use of that. Have another little page insert here as well. And then on page six, our final page, I was gonna make this a tuck spot, but there was adhesive backing on the velvet sheets. So I could have put some other paper behind it, but I didn't. I just decided it's a nice little decorative element. This opens up like this. I love this paper. It's one of my favorites. I just think it's so cute. And then, like I said, we've got the, uh, the identical page here on the back inside cover as we had on the front inside cover with our pocket and all of our little botanicals and mushrooms growing on the pattern paper there. And then on the back, I went ahead and put one of the ephemera pieces that I made, and this one says Boo. And I just think this is so cute. I love the way it turned out. Um, and I'm really happy with it overall. I really appreciate all of you taking the time to watch my videos and comment and like and subscribe. It just means the world to me. I am having so much fun doing this. I'm a really busy single mama and I'm working essentially two jobs right now. I've got a lot of stuff going on the side and I'm also working extra hard to get off the ground on a new job that I've taken on recently that um, is a new position for that company here in my area. So I'm doing a lot of extra work lately. I still have the three youngest at home. My other three are somewhat grown and gone, but you know, my daughter's in college. And so there's just a lot that I'm juggling here. And crafting has been one of the greatest respites and one of the greatest therapies that um, for me. And so to be able to do this and share with you all, you know, usually I'm doing this in the middle of the night. <laughs> and so to be able to have some friends to talk to and to share with and hear your feedback is just, it just warms my heart. And I'm so truly, truly, truly grateful for each and every one of you and all of the encouragement and kindness that you have shown me. Thank you so very much. Please be sure to click on all of the links in the description notes below and check out all the other contributors of Sandy's 13 Frights Before Halloween 2022. They are a talented bunch and I just pinch myself. I can't believe I'm even associated with them. I am I'm major fangirl of every one of them. So it's really fun for me to be a part of it. And these are my friends and I just, oh, I just love all of them. So please go check out their channels if you haven't already. Make sure that you are like, subscribe, hit that bell notification, and make sure that you're following all of their amazing stuff as well. All right, y'all, that's what I've got for you today. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I hope that you are being kind to yourselves and I hope you're finding joy in your journey. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.